Let's move on to our next story now and talk about the never-ending debate around money and happiness. Many would say that money can buy you happiness. Well, guess what? If that was true, America would not be in the middle of a mental health epidemic. We'll talk about this more now. What if I told you that the world's richest country is also one of the world's most anxious and the most depressed countries? I'm still talking about the United States of America. Such is the crisis there that all American adults may soon have to undergo an anxiety disorder checkup. So how's that going to work? You know, when you go to your doctor, she checks for blood pressure, heart rate, etc. In America, doctors may soon also be checking for anxiety. The obvious question is why? Well, because anxiety numbers have touched sky high. Let me show you. Between August 2020 and February 2021, adults showing recent symptoms of anxiety increased 41.5%. Earlier, the number would be 36.4%. Do you see the difference there, the increase? So it makes sense that a government-backed expert panel has now recommended that all adults under the age of 65 should be scanned for anxiety disorders. Whether or not the administration of Joe Biden will welcome this recommendation is, of course, another story. But either way, it does not take away the seriousness of this crisis. First things first, anxiety is no stranger to America. According to one particular estimate, 40% of American women and 25% of American men suffer from anxiety sometime or the other in their lifetime. Again, the obvious question is why? Why are Americans so anxious? Currently, that's because of a plethora of reasons. There's inflation. Cost of living is up 8.3%. A loaf of bread in America is now 16.4% more expensive. Eggs, 39.8%. Let's talk about reason number two. There is a rise in crime rates. On this show, we have repeatedly talked about America's problem with gun terror. Well, it has only worsened over the last two years. 2022 began with an 11-month-old baby being shot in the face. It happened in the Bronx in New York. This was on the 20th of January. The homicide numbers for the first half of 2022 are 39% higher than they were back in 2019 or pre-pandemic years. And this is according to the U.S. Council on Criminal Justice. Aggravated assault has gone up. So have robberies. Property crimes are also up, as are residential burglaries. You see, fear adds to anxiety. But here's what has likely been the biggest contributor. The Wuhan virus pandemic, it has claimed more than a million lives in America and infected more than 94 million others. Today, Americans like people in all other countries are scared to fall ill. There is also the fear of losing loved ones to the Wuhan virus. Some of these feelings, of course, are universal. Some of these feelings are relatable for all of us, but not all though. You may currently be watching me from a country where crime rates are low or inflation is in check. But the pandemic, well, that has taken a toll on all of us. The uncertainty around it, the overwhelming sense of fear, somewhere, that has consumed most of us today. The World Health Organization found that during the first year of the pandemic, anxiety and depression increased by 25% globally, 25%. In America, like we told you, it increased over 41%. Experts are obviously concerned. As early as April this year, they were pushing for a preventive approach. Back in April, the same government-backed panel recommended anxiety screening for children and adolescents aged between 8 and 18 years. You see, anxiety has rather unique ways of expressing itself. Sometimes, children with anxiety may repeatedly complain of stomach aches or headaches. People with anxiety have difficulty focusing. It's something to watch out for. They get easily irritated. They have difficulty sleeping or controlling an overwhelming sense of worry. People with anxiety also almost always feel tired or fatigued. What's more, anxiety comes with a huge cost. For starters, it sabotages your work performance. 
It also takes a toll on your social interaction with your family, friends, your peers. And obviously, it goes on to affect your mental health. It's not just the person, but also her country that pays the price of this anxiety. According to The Lancet, poor mental health costs the world $2.5 trillion per year. And this is in poor health and reduced productivity, something we just spoke about. By 2030, this number is expected to touch $6 trillion a year, I repeat, $6 trillion a year. Look at those shocking figures. The solution to this problem begins with prevention, and that's what the U.S. is trying to focus on as of now. It's a priority. It is looking to screen children, adolescents, and adults for anxiety. But this is just the start of a long battle. And the next and most obvious move would be to address the cause, the root cause of anxiety. And this would include, and this would include answering some uncomfortable questions for all of us, be it around crime rates and gun laws, specific to America, or how America, with all its wealth, is failing to make Americans happy. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.